Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Bruno Scheller from Saarland University in Germany. Um, it's a great honor for me to be invited to the uh, EBC 2021 uh, Bifurcation Club meeting. My talk is about structural balloons uh, for coronary artery disease. Um, why is there a need for alternative treatments to current generation truck building stands? Because we know that there is a stand related uh, yearly event rate of up to 4%. And according to current knowledge, this event rate, uh, increasing event rate does uh, never stop. This meta analysis <clears throat> compares the um, clinical outcomes uh, in the randomized trials comparing DCB for coronary artery disease with alternative treatment. And as you can see, uh, within the first year, there's a reduced rate of myocardial infarction when using a DCB only. Um, and after three years, um, there is a lower uh, all-cost mortality after DCB use, um, especially driven by cardiac mortality at three years. To date, the European guidelines um, have only a recommendation for the treatment of um, coronary instant resinus for DCB. This recommendation is supported by a large number of randomized clinical trials comparing DCB and DCS for ISR treatment. And as you can see, uh, overall, there's a somewhat higher TLR rate uh, after DCB use compared to stand in stand. However, if you look at the card, clinical endpoints, death or myocardial infarction, there's um, a trend with lower numbers uh, in the DCB group for reduced events. The basic principle of DCB only is presented here. Um, lesion preparation is the most important part of the interventional procedure. And after um, having the result of a lesion preparation, uh, you have to decide if this lesion is suitable for DCB only or uh, if there's a need for a permanent stand. And we defined a so-called acceptable angiographic result, which means uh, no flow-limiting dissections. Type A and B dissections are fine because they are not flow-limiting. Um, a residual stenosis of less than 30%. And if you want to include functional measurements, uh, the recommendation is an FR rate of at least 0.8. Um, it has been shown in uh, clinical data that this recommendation of the acceptable angiographic result is very suitable to predict the uh, long-term outcome in terms of target lesion revascularization, as in this work from the uh, Colombo group from Milano. What about de novo disease, which is not yet uh, supported in the guidelines? We have several clinical scenarios for DCB, small vessels, acute coronary syndrome, patient with high bleeding risk, or uh, bifurcation. From the in the census paper here, you can see an overview of the randomized trials on DCB only in de novo lesions and data supporting the use of DCB also in vessels uh, from at least three millimeter in diameter. Uh, the largest randomized trial so far is the basket small two trial, 758 patients randomized to either uh, DCB only or current generation truck eluting stands in coronary arteries up to three millimeter in diameter. And as you can see, MACE overall was no difference um, up to three years uh, with the two concepts. What about record balloons and bifurcation lesions? We have uh, uh, different scenarios here. One uh, initially investigated was a DCB plus the metal stand in the main branch and DCB in the side branch. Um, it turned out that this is not a good idea. In general, the combination of DCB with a newly implanted stand, especially the metal stand, uh, leads to inferior results compared to a truck eluting stand. Next scenario in bifurcations is uh, using a truck eluting stand in the main branch and treating the side branch with a, a DCB. Um, here we have registry and randomized data for this approach. This is the Biolux 1 trial uh, using an um, Everolumus eluting stand in the main branch with a very good acceptable late bloom loss and uh, Pactitaxel coated balloon in the side branch with a late bloom loss of point uh, one and uh, very good clinical outcomes. The trial from Herod and colleagues was randomized, 50 patients in each group, focusing on the treatment of the side branch, either with conventional balloon angioplasty or with the uh, tri-coated balloon. Um, and as you can see here, late loom loss uh, was highly significant reduced by the use of the tri-coated balloon uh, compared to uh, balloon angioplasty alone. And similar outcomes have been uh, reported from the Randomized pepka biff trial, truck-coated balloon versus uh, POBA, 32 patients each. 
And here we also see a significant reduction of late loom loss 0 0.08 with the signal please versus 0.47 in the proba group and binary stimulus rate 6 versus 26 percent. The next approach is a more puristic approach, leaving nothing behind main branch TCB and side branch TCB. Um, for this approach, there are we, uh, we have some case series, 39 patients reported. Then we have the uh, registry data um, published by the group at colleagues, 70 patients with DCB only in the bifurcation, 57 combination with stenting. And as you can see, if you look at the um, nine months MACE rate, this were very acceptable data, DCB only 6.1, DCB plus stenting. 7.3% event rate. Here you can see now in clinical example, this was one of the early trifurcation cases we did. Um, as you can see, we used three DCBs in all three uh, branches of this right coronary artery. And this was the initial result. And after 13 months, uh, you see an increase in lumen in all side branches, uh, which is very common after DCB only treatment. And we call this uh, effect lumen, late lumen enlargement. And here you can see the MLD, distribu uh, MLD distribution of uh, a series of patients at four months follow up. And as you can see, there's a shift from the left to the right in MLD distribution, which is unique for uh, this DCB only treatment. Um, this finding has been confirmed by other groups. Um, here, for example, IBUS VH uh, investigation. This increase in total lumen area from post-procedure to follow-up is uh, in line with an increase in total vessel area, which may be one of the main um, um, reasons why we see this lumen enlargement. And we have a last scenario for bifurcations, treatment of the main branch of DCB and no treatment at all of the side branch. Why is this an approach? Because we have also seen from IWAS data that if we do treat the main branch, you see an increase in main vessel lumen area at the origin of the side branch over time, which is always also an effect of this late lumen enlargement. So my conclusion is uh, for DCB coronary, so far paclitaxel coated balloons are the standard of care. You should follow strictly the rules of DCB only, including lesion preparation as the most important procedural step. After lesion preparation, the decision is if you use the DCB only or a current generation paclitaxel stand. One of the interesting effects of DCB only treatment is late lumen enlargement. You can expect no stent associated late events. And in bifurcations, we have different scenarios. Uh, the most frequent will be drug loading stent, main branch, sign branch, uh, drug coated balloon. If you have not that much experience in DCB only so far, uh, if you want to go a more puristic approach, it makes sense to try leaving nothing behind either with DCB in main and side branch or um, a very simple approach using DCB only in the main branch. Thank you very much. Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2000 annual meeting. The title of my presentation is Feasibility, Safety, and Efficacy of Drug Corridable Only Treatment in Left Main Coronary Stenosis. Left main disease with dimerous stenosis over than 50% requires revascularization to improve the prognosis. Among them, PCI is recommended as a class 2A up to a syntax score of 32. The recorded balloon is basically working as a balloon mechanism, so we need to know the balloon plus effect. The Benestent to one RCT compared balloon to bare metal stand, and there was no difference in hard end points such as death and myocardial infarction. Only repeat PCI was more in balloon group. It is due to restenosis, which can be resolved with local drug treatment like drug coated balloon. To resolve this problem of balloon bare metal stand and drug routine stand were developed. But hard end point such as death and myocardial infarction were not improved. Then what about drug coated balloon? Can DCB improve outcomes in this era? We performed PCI in 42 consecutive patients with left main disease. In patients with adequate balloon angioplasty, 23 patients were treated with drug coated balloon, 
and the remaining 19 patients were treated with DES. The mean age was 63 years old in DCB and 67 years old in DES, and the most of the patients were men. There were mainly unstable angina patients, and there were three acute myocardial infarction patients in the DES group. The syntax score was higher in the DES group, median value 27.5, and three vessel disease was also more common, uh, 68%. In both groups, most of the patients were bifurcation region. The mean DES diameter was 3.7 millimeter, which was larger than the drug coated balloon 3.4 millimeter. And IBUS was almost used in drug eluting stand group. Uh, there was no bailout stenting in DCB group. In the QSHA of 23, uh, DCB treated patients, diameter stenosis at baseline was 72%, and post DCB was 30% residual diameter stenosis. In follow, uh, the follow up duration is around six months, diameter stenosis was unchanged 31%, and lay lumen loss was 0 0.1 millimeter. One patient had a binary stenosis. We successfully retreated it by drocolid balloon again. In drug eluting stand, one patient died from myocardial infarction. This patient had already had a left main myocardial infarction when he came to our hospital and died several hours after stand PCI. After one year follow-up, uh, there were two target region revascularization in drug coated balloon and two events in drug eluting stand, including one cardiac death and one cerebral hemorrhage. This is a 61 years old man. He had a very tight stenosis in the left main uh, bifurcation. After check by IBUS, polyangioplasty was performed uh, with the left main to proximal RAD and treated with a drug coated balloon. Although some residual stenosis remains, the procedure was finished because the lumen was much bigger than uh, baseline. After six months, left main stenosis was not observed. This patient has been well for three years without any angina symptoms. This is a 57 years old man and has a left main CTO. After wiring, angioplasty was done with a small size 1.5 millimeter balloon first. After ballooning, floor appeared. I did sequential balloon angioplasty increasing balloon size. After that, the floor improved a lot. I also performed the recorded balloon uh, for midway radii, this tight region. I did a several balloon angioplasty with optimal sized balloon from left main to RAD and from left main to LCX, followed by drocoded balloon treatment. This is the uh, final result after drocoded balloon treatment. After six months, left main triplication region were much dilated and uh, it looks normal coronary angiogram. So we successfully treated left main CTO triplication region with a drug coated balloon only treatment. The patient is currently doing well without any symptom for over one year. This is a target region revascularization case, a 45 year old man with a very tight stenosis of left main shaft and a decreased anti-grade flow. Uh, it's just a TIMI2 flow. After balloon angioplasty and drug coated balloon treatment, the lumen increased significantly and the floor was normalized. Timmy 3 floor, his angina was gone. However, the patient had a follow up loss after discharge and was voluntarily discontinuing all drugs, including antiplatelet drugs. After six months, chest pain developed and left main disease recurred. Because he had further compliance, we retreated the region with a drug coated balloon. This is a follow coronary angiogram. Follow coronary angiogram showed a good result without recurrence after eight months. Now he has no symptom. So, why do we have to work so hard for drug coated balloon? Short duration of dual antiplatelet therapy for patients of further compliance, especially in young men for high bleeding risk patients and drug coated balloon has no stand related event like a stent thrombosis. And you may have the opportunity of bypass surgery or biologic treatment in the future. Here is a take home message. 
The purpose of PCR is to reduce the death and myocardial infarction. The COVID-1 treatment is increasing with a low rate of heart end point, death and myocardial infarction, and acceptable rate of clinical outcome in left main disease. And this treatment without stenting is uh, feasible and well-tolerated method for the novel left main region if the free dilation result is good. However, uh, we need randomized and controlled trial and it necessary to further evaluate the safety and efficacy of drug oral one treatment in left main disease. Thank you for your attention. Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2021 meeting. The title of my presentation is Stentless Procedure, Effective DCV Treatment. This is my disclosure slide. In current guideline for the treatment of bifurcation region, single center strategy is a major method. In United States also, European country also. Of course, Japan too. When I considered about current situation, I have some questions. As I showed, single stent strategy is reliable treatment method. Will I need stentless procedure in this day and age? What situation will need stentless procedure? What will be the reliable stentless procedure? Considering about the candidates for stentless procedure, some conditions may apply like the following. As regarding patient background, we can say these things. In Japan, many doctors want to avoid to use stent for younger patients, especially less than 50s. As regarding region morphology, I think these two situations are important. About the reliable stentless procedure, DCB is paid attention recently. In the last EBC, there were some comments about it. This paper reported the effect of paclitaxel coated balloon hole side of branch in true bifurcation region from China. In comparison with conventional balloon group, late lumen loss in DCB group was significantly smaller and incidence of mace was also significantly lower. From Japan, Dr. Kitani's group reported the efficacy of DCB after plaque reduction. They evaluated outcomes of 129 DCA DCB cases without stent use. In this study, true bifurcation region was 14% and more than 70% of main target was in the main branch. TRR at 12 months was 3.1% and it was quite low. Clinical outcomes were pretty good totally. In this study, there are no differences in minimum lumen diameter and percent diameter stenosis between post DCA and follow up despite stentless procedure. This may mean that aggressive plaque reduction facilitates the effect of DCB. According to the data of 247 patients treated with DCB in my hospital, region preparation less than 58.5% in plaque area was important in stentless PCR using DCB. Let me show my case. This patient had a severe stenosis in proximal circumflex and mild stenosis in proximal LAD. To avoid the compromise of LAD, I performed directional atherectomy to the circumflex. After atherectomy, angio and IBAS image looked pretty good. And then I directed the proximal circumflex with cutting bone and DCB. Final angiogram showed a good result. One year later, there were no resonances. Next case was 60s male with 111 left main disease. As I wanted to avoid complex stenting and carolina or plaque shift, I performed a me to both branches. After a me, I direct proximal rest circumflex with cutting bone and DCB, and then I put two synergy stents because main branch region was very diffuse. After putting stent pot and minimum keys was performed to fix this trifurcation. Final angiogram showed a good result. 
Although the section was recognized at proximal circumflex, I decided to observe it because the section was not malignant on either image and the percent plaque area was 46%. This dissection healed completely and there was no resonance at all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my conclusion. Although the cases which need a strengthened strategy may be rare currently because of the development of DES, there will be some situations in which stentless seems to be beneficial for the patient. DCB may be a potential strategy for the treatment of bifurcation region when we aspire for a stentless procedure. However, some kind of region preparation such as plaque reduction will be needed to make DCB more effective. Thank you for your attention. I am Hyung Jun Ju from Korea University Annam Hospital and thank you for having me in EBC 2021. My topic is repeat PCI for left main bifurcation ISL lesion. I have nothing to disclose. Current guidelines recommend both cabbage and PCI for left main coronary artery disease depending on its anatomical consideration. PCI for left main coronary artery disease became feasible and safe as cabbage. Therefore, the proportion of PCI for left main coronary artery disease is significantly increasing. The problem is that the PCI for left main coronary artery disease is associated with higher risk for risk diagnosis and repeat revascularization. In the syntax trial, 5-year incidence for repeat revascularization after PCI for left main coronary artery disease was 26.7%. In pre-combat trial, ischemic driven target vessel revascularization was 11.4%. Importantly, as you can see the syntax trial, there are patients underwent repeat revascularization after left main coronary artery disease PCI. I feel that the some left main instant restonosis cases might be included in this population, and repeat PCI was a more common revascularization strategy for this population than cabbage. Let me show one case. The case was a 47 year old man. In 2007, PCI with endeavor stand was performed at proximal circumflex artery. One year later, Instant restenosis was developed. We implanted another stent from left circumflex osteum. Final angiography showed good angiographic result. However, two years later, chest pain was redeveloped and coronary angiography shows severe ISR at LAD osteum and left circumflex osteum. So, we implanted two stents with final kissing balloon technique. Post-procedural eye showed good stent opposition. Only one stent stroke at the proximal edge of left main stent was insufficiently opposed, but we think we thought this result was quite optimal. However, one year later, severe instant restenosis was redeveloped at the LAD osteum. So, we performed drug coated angioplasty for that lesion. Final angiography showed good result. What we can learn from this case is that the lesions and the proce procedural involvement of left main bifurcation could be a significant predictor for instant restenosis. As you already know, the guidelines recommend drug coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug retin stent implantation for instant wrist stenosis lesion as class 1A. However, the clinical prognosis between drug coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug retin stent implantation, especially for left main bifurcation ISL lesion, is largely uncertain. We compare the clinical outcome between drug coated balloon angioplasty and repeat drug retin stent implantation in patients with left main bifurcation ISL lesion. This is a single center retrospective study and include only 75 patients with left main bifurcation ISL lesion who underwent repeat PCI. Baseline characteristics show that drug lifting stand group tend to have higher instance of acute myocardial infarction presentation 
and index PCI than drug coated balloon group. Previous PCI characteristics show that 33% had non left main bifurcation lesion at the previous PCI. Drug coated balloon group tend to have higher percentage of stand in stand cases and a little bit larger previous stand diameters compared to a drug routine stand group. True bifurcation rate was 27% in DES group and 29% in drug coated balloon angioplasty group. At the time before 2015, Intravascular image was performed only 25 at 35%. QCA data showed the post -pro procedural target lesion linear lumen diameter was significantly smaller in drug coated balloon angioplasty group. I feel that the selection bias on drug coated balloon angioplasty favoring small vest di diameter and acute recoil after drug coated balloon angioplasty might contribute this result. However, follow-up ta uh, target lesion minimum lumen diameter showed only borderline significance. Difference of follow-up target lesion minimum lumen diameter was attenuated. Considering that the heterogeneous baseline clinical and angiographic characteristics between two groups, we performed the propensity score matching analysis to compare the clinical prognosis between two groups. May show similar clinical outcome even after propensity score matching. Low rank P value in Kaplan Mayer curve was 0.64. Cox proportional hazard model for MACE suggests that the true bifurcation lesion was the only one important risk factor for MACE in patients who underwent repeat PCI for left main bifurcation ISL lesion. In summary, 33% of patients with left main bifurcation ISR lesion had non-left main bifurcation lesions at the previous PCI. It suggests that the initial PCI strategy for proximal segment of main branch is very important. Patient in drug-coated balloon angioplasty group has a trend of less acute myocardial infarction presentation at index PCI and more stand-in-stand cases. And smaller post PCI target lesion minimum lumen diameter was also noted in drug coated balloon angioplasty group. This suggests that the non urgent clinical situation and lesion complexities might make the operator conservative and suppress aggressive procedure. Finally, it might result in clinical outcome of repeat PCI for these patients. However, the instance of MACE remained to be similar between two groups during the follow up period. Multivariate Cox regression analysis demonstrated that the true bifurcation lesion is the only important independent risk predictor for MACE after procedure. So we have to consider cabbage in these cases. Thank you for your listening.